Hi, Tatiana. Thank you so much for joining this uh, conversation about living with lockdown. How are you? How are you feeling today? Hi, Ro. Thank you. Thank you for having me for this conversation. I'm feeling well, you know, we just, uh, I started the morning with an early bike ride with my family to, to the forest. So we're very lucky we live, you know, very close to the forest. And before all the dog owners go out, so we tend to go on a quick mountain biking ride. Sounds sounds brilliant, and the weather is perfect for it, isn't it? Um, yeah. Before we actually get into this, you know, conversation about lockdown and what it's meant for you, I think it'd be really nice if you could give our viewers a little brief introduction, a glimpse into who you are, and and what excites you. Sure. Sure. So who am I? So I'm, uh, my name is Tatiana. I'm uh, a Russian, but who lived in uh, Germany, US and UK. And uh, after very long, um, over 20 years career in the financial services across those three countries. And um, well, quite a lot of what people would describe uh, as as success, which I achieved there, um, I took courage uh, to move to something which gives me much, much more happiness. And and you know, and I was I was happy in my in my job before at the at the different stages. However, what I didn't realize for a very long time. And I only probably realized after I took the step out how burnt out I was without even noticing it myself or paying attention to my body mm. because I almost overstayed uh, what felt true for me. And yes, um, you know, it's, it's almost like that success helped me in a way in a lockdown and it felt very scary to um to move to something which would give me more satisfaction because it felt that everything what i achieved happened by fluke and it would be very difficult to recreate it yeah do you also feel that success sometimes um almost you know masks the underlying pain you're feeling because you feel that outwardly everything is going well so you tend to then ignore this maybe the signs your body is giving you that all is not well because you're looking at the external trappings of success and you think well it must be going well because look i've got all of this yes i think um i think when we work so hard for something and um and we achieve what society and what might be us ourselves dreamt of 10 years ago, then yes, it, it very easily could hide something else uh, which we are striving for, you know, or which, which our soul wants, wants to get. But, you know, uh, yeah, it's almost, um, it's almost, I think it's very important to be grateful, but sometimes, as with a lot of other things, uh, the gra too much gratitude could have another side. You know, so it's you know, it's and and, and I felt at that time, uh, you know, I thought, well, I should be grateful. Uh, I work four days a week on the trading floor, in as an MD in a job uh, which comes very easy to, easy to me and I make good money, I should be grateful. And, 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 you know, and it's almost like this feeling of gratitude and status kept me captured almost. Yeah. Do you know, I, we've talked about this once before and I absolutely love it. And I want to, I want to revisit the whole concept of gratitude because it's such a big thing. And, you know, a lot of people um, rightly believe that having gratitude is a big part of, you know, feeling more fulfilled, but 
it has a darker side to it, which I want to, which I would love to explore a bit later on in this conversation. So just, you know, to complete your introduction. So you, you felt burnt out, you felt, you know, body, your body was telling you something was not right. And well, you actually, this- actually, I didn't even realize I was burnt out, Ross. So that's the whole thing. So my body was sending me signals, but uh, I didn't realize at that time that that what it was. Right. And so what was the trigger for you to make a change? So tell us a bit more about what that was and what, what you do now. So the trigger at that time was one day, I literally came into the office and I realized, you know, and I was um, leading a sales team and uh, I was closing trades in hundred millions sterling, even more like we're selling 5 billion deals. And, and I realized that it feels to me that I'm almost trading potatoes or apples and, and rather than, and then I asked actually myself, when did I last time had this feeling of excitement and adrenaline, which I used to have before when I was closing the deal. And I realized it hasn't been for a while. And, and, and that kind of was the moment when I thought, well, it's all nice and good, but it's my life. Yeah. So, you know, and I was like, for what am I giving every day away without getting a joy? Yes. Yeah. So that was the moment you realized maybe something wasn't right. And, and was it... Was, was it immediately obvious to you what you would be doing instead if you were not doing that anymore? Well, um, I, uh, I have always had uh, a very strong interest in um, supporting people and uh, leaders. So growing, um, growing people in my team and also actually, you know, supporting, supporting other leaders around me, you know, in fact, uh, without, without using the right words at that time for the definition of that, I was coaching my own manager in both dealing with his personal life, but also helping him to establish uh, relationships uh, with other parts of the bank. Um, so, and, uh, and during my probably like last years in finance, I, I was developing much more so scientific interest in human behavior and psychology. So I knew that there is something in psychology that I'd like to explore further. So, uh, and as a result, I just, I just took the opportunity uh, of, um, booking myself onto Hanley Business School uh, Executive Coaching course called Professional Certificate in Coaching. And of course, you know, as a, as a leader uh, in banking, um, as a woman leader in banking, I did have introduction to coaching through being part of a senior woman sponsorship program and, you know, working also with my own coach who actually used to be my client. Uh, before in finance, uh, so so yes, so I was aware of that. What I, I I was aware that I actually have been supporting leaders for over twenty years already. What I didn't realize before I finished my qualification, uh, well, before I started my qualification, is that I do have a real gift and. Uh, intuition in um, in seeing what is underneath the question mm. and and and, and also and also of, i didn't know yet how much joy uh do i personally get as well by seeing people moving closer to their to their potential yeah yeah. And becoming unstuck. Yeah. And, and that neatly brings us on to this very, you know, testing 
situation that we find ourselves in. And, and I think, you know, uh, you'd probably agree with me that it's, it's demanding a different kind of leadership, isn't it, on a corporate level, but also politically it's demanding a very different kind of leadership because so much ahead of us is unknown. Um, and, you know, with a lot more people having to work from home or remotely, you know, how leaders um, gather the troops, as it were, and, you know, get them to sort of have a shared purpose is going to be very different. Do you, do you have any thoughts on how, how equipped, you know, some of the, the big companies are in managing this? Well, what, what I think, what such type of um, crisis creates, I mean, first of all, on the subject of crisis, you know, there is a very good expression, which says never miss a crisis, right? Yes. So crisis always brings some new opportunities with that. And of course, it's a very difficult time and it's unprecedented. And, and in the first stage, we kind of go through the stage of chaos and uh, business of sorting out of, you know, of kind of new arrangements, right? Yeah. And, and I think what happens is in such type of stage in the process, that the issues that which existed before they get amplified so if the business was already had some underlining struggle in communication in uh, in finance that's all going to be amplified even more mm. so uh, and uh, and I, and i think that's almost like that's disadvantage and advantage of, of the crisis, right? Yeah. And then how to get through that stage and, and then also moving to the concept of acceptance. And actually this is a very nice um, system which uh, one of my you know, colleagues um, shared uh, you know, in the program in which I am. Um, it's called Think Shift, and it's those three stages of chaos, acceptance, um, and, uh, and new reality. And you know, it's how to move through those stages and then actually see how, those, how this new reality brings also new opportunities. Yeah. Because you know, in banking, for example, I have been struggling or I, or I have been trying to change some rigidness in approaches to the flexibility of work environment. You know, like obviously I was lucky enough to pursue four days a week opportunity and I, get, and I got it, but a lot of other people were not able to do it in front office. In the same way, um, arrangement of coming slightly later to the office. We're speaking about 7.30 versus 7.45 or dinner. Uh, and, and, and resistance of organizations to accept that because that's what we have done always or because of what's known. And, and as a result, what it does, we're all different individuals. So, and, and as a result, actually, this is what also not a bill lack of ability to give people flexibility to work in the way how it works best for them actually kills trust and kills diversity. So, and I think what happens right now, it's, it's kind of almost like a paradox. The finance now has to accept remote working. Yes. The question is what, are, what is going to happen on the other side of that? You mean when we come out the other, when we come yes. out of this crisis, yes. we're going exactly. to go back to exactly. the old days. Yes, I think that's, uh, that's going to be so interesting to watch. And, and I think, you know, uh, what, what is clear is that most employees want to feel like they are trusted, that they have autonomy, that they, you know, that, that they, can, they can take ownership of the small piece of work that they do and not have somebody constantly looking over their shoulders, right? And it feels like this is such a great opportunity for employees to prove that they are worthy of that kind of trust and that they are worthy of you know, being given that freedom 
even when this artificial situation does not persist. But you know, whether whether we have that or not, I think we'll we'll find out very soon. Um, what I want to do now is talk about you know how you are personally dealing with the lockdown. So has there been much change in the way your day-to-day -day life has you know has been changed by the lockdown? Well, uh, on one hand, I was already um, coaching some of my clients uh, online. So, um, so obviously now all, all the clients have to be online. Also the team workshops have to be moved online. And that's of course creates some good opportunities as well. What, what I find with Zoom, you know, the breakout rooms make it so clearer and, and actually provide almost new opportunities. Yes. So I think uh, for my work, Yes, as, as, as I think with all works, it amplifies the issues that need to be worked on. So, you know, it amplifies, for example, the need for creativity, to think how to serve the clients in a more creative way. Yes. It's, 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 it's also redefines, I mean, time is important concept for everyone, and it redefines how we use time, and I like this, you know, it makes it so clear. It's like, oh, I have the problem that uh, I'm so busy. And actually, I'm, even though I'm working from home, I can be late for dinner or doing this, you know, because I'm so busy. And then I stop and ask myself, well, is it a new problem or is it a recurring problem? And I think this time, because on one hand, the paradigm has shifted, but on the other hand, particular habits and problems they just keep on recurring so as a result you know, it's an opportunity to relook at them and yes. think well how am i creating that um so so from that point of view uh, it, 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 I, I i think this time is a time of amplification and you know and all this like uncertainty well you know it actually makes it so clear as well how much certainty do we normally have? Yes. Or is it just the illusion of certainty, which we think we have? Yeah, that's, that's a really, really, in you know, a very profound thought, because um, I suppose we feel it's amplified because everyone, for the first time, you know, everyone is experiencing a almost a common uncertainty. You know, we, we, we're sort of all faced with the common same, with the same problem, whereas usually we all have our little individual problems and, our uncertainties are very personal to us. So do, do you think that that has um, caused you to reflect about, you know, some of the things you talked about, you know, the way you use time and, you know, the feeling of busyness. Do you feel that this feeling of a very global sense of this uncertainty has made you reflect on your own working life more than you would have otherwise done? Yes, yes. Probably um, you're right because um, because you, uh, one doesn't have an excuse of uh, of transport problems or of the meetings outside because we d d d d you know it's um, of course I'm in charge of how I create my meetings and I do appreciate that a lot of my clients um, for whom the meetings are set up in a particular way by organization. But again, do you know, where, where do you have the power to ask for what you need? Yes. And express what would serve you the best uh, to make you productive so that you contribute? And what stops one to expressing that? And do you really know yourself what actually you need? So from that point of view, 100%, that's... that's um, situation amplifies it. And I really like what you said about um, commonality of our experiences, because it, it all, again, it always exists. It's just covered by individual problems. And, but what, what, what this crisis does, it actually shows <laughs> exactly how common it is. Look yeah. at this, Prince Charles got coronavirus or had coronavirus. Boris uh, had it, you know, so, so it's like, 
It's almost demonstration of compassion, of commonality, of yeah. human experience. Yeah, I really like that. And, and tell me about how your family is coping with it, because it feels like for your work, you know, life, it hasn't massively changed things because you were probably working from home a bit before anyway. But what about the rest of your family? How are they dealing with this lockdown? So I have two teenage girls um, and the husband. So uh, I know obviously for girls, uh, you know, the, the, the online education uh, is, is a change. And also the fact that they now have to spend more time um, with each other, which is, you know, which I think would contribute to the deepening of their relationship. Luckily, they already had a good relationship, but also defining their own schedule mm. and uh, yes of course there, there is with online learning so, you know, it's, it's 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 kind of more responsibility is on them and I, and i think it's a great um what we also notice it's a great opportunity for them to contribute to household duties and and actually in a way more opportunities to spend for us together as, as a family, you know, r rather than being uh, busy with driving girls around to various of their activities, right? Yeah. So yeah. it creates, it creates opportunities. So my husband um, worked from home before, but again, you know, it's, um, it challenges and rethinking um, of how to run a business without having and access to external external meetings and yeah and again um it's it's amplifications of um uh of commonality uh, of compassion but also you know the fundamental fears actually the the basic fears of whether you are a ceo or um or delivering food, the fears fundamentally of humans are very and needs are very similar. It's just they express differently, right? Yes. And it's also interesting now to see like those 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 actually people who are delivering food to us. Obviously, you know the medical staff. You know, I I saw the post lady. You know, those are the heroes, right? So it's mm -hmm. it's actually I think it's beautiful that you know. Um, this whole admiration is moving from the film stars or from celebrities to, to the people who, who are actually helping us to continue our life, right? Yeah, yeah. I so agree. And I think it's, it's almost a rebalancing of things that, that have gone a bit too you know, skewed in the, in, the, in the sort of in favor of the, 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 the people with all the money and you know, maybe all the sort of outward trappings of fame and success to to, as you say, the people who are the genuine heroes. And also I, I wanted to share something I read which really gladdened my heart that, you know, in India, the river Ganges, you know, the river Ganga has been, obviously it's the holy river and, and people go in droves to bathe and, you know, wash their sins. And, and the water of the river has not been even fit for bathing for many years. And now because of the lockdown and because nobody goes there, it is fit enough to drink. Wow. Can Amazing. you believe that? And literally just in the space of maybe four weeks, less than that. So it just, I think it just tells us what is possible if we just allow it to, to emerge and to be stop mm -hmm. smothering it with the other stuff that we've just got so used to doing. And, you know, maybe we think that there is no other way. So, um, yeah, I thought I'd share that with you. And I, I think yes, for me, what, what I'm really interested in is from your perspective, you know, both, both obviously as a coach, but also from your personal perspective, some of the things that you're discovering, you know, within the family, maybe, you know, your wider family connections, you know, which of those bits are you going to hang on to even when we get back to a more normal way of life? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I guess uh, what's becoming very clear is um, the feeling truly through what uh, actually we are in control of and what we are not. And as a result, focusing on, on what we can in control, 
control. And that's normally actually fundamentally comes to the place of ourselves. Yes. I agree. And, and, I, 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 and I think that's, that's definitely something that helps me, um, dealing you know whenever i start you know our brain we have this tricky brain right that uh, goes in rumination and catastrophizing and that's what makes us human right um if uh, when a a zebra is eating a grass and the lion appears um you know zebra runs away and if it's super fast zebra imagine she ran away you know and lion is gone 10 minutes later, she will be eating grass on a different field. If we see a lion, you know, and we're eating a croissant on the streets of London, it's unlikely that <laughs> once lion, a lion disappears out of our sight, we'll continue eating our croissant or something. <laughs> so, so, so what I'm just thinking, because, you know, it's like brain naturally goes into this catastrophizing and rumination stages. And, and then just to stop and ask myself, well, actually, what am I doing? Am I in control of that? Is it, is it the business of the universe uh, or God, you know? Uh, and if I'm not in control of that, what makes me think that me spending the energy on those thoughts would make um, any reasonable contribution to my own well-being or to the well-being of the family around me? Yeah. I love that. And I think so many people who are so anxious and fearful about what's going on, you know, could, could really tap into that sense of, you know, there's no point really worrying about things that are just not in our gift to control. So, so obviously when you read the news or you listen to the news, it's all very, very grim and serious. And, you know, every day the death toll numbers, you know, make us all shudder. How are you and your family sort of trying to deal with that negativity and make, maybe make light of some of that fairly grim situation well uh, yeah and and, and in a row, i would say that yes you know like say say on the point that you said um the anxieties which appear I, I think what is very important is to acknowledge acknowledge that that it's normal because um and you know the, don't take me wrong i um i do Periodically, I, I'm not naturally quite anxious person. It's just I'm develop, I have been developing the techniques of dealing with that. And, 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 and what I can say, it's like, it's important also to think and allow yourself that period of feeling like that, right? Yes. Because, because otherwise, um, what I notice and what I see also in my clients is, is this beating up, you know, like say, say I was working on slowing down to speed up and what I realized and coming back to concept of busyness uh, that say for example if I go for a run early morning in a forest that I would be listening to my audio book and doing again five things at once and then I thought wait a minute actually it's my coach highlighted to me he said wait a minute so you keep on running permanently at the high speed. So, so I forced myself to stop listening to audiobook and then I noticing what's around me. And then at that moment, I, I started hearing my own thoughts. And, and then I realized I was telling myself off for not completely doing it properly to my own standards because I was meant to feel the air on my face, the this birds singing and the smell. And I was thinking, what am I doing? I keep on bashing myself up, up you know? And, and, and that's what, you know, so you asked um, how to, to deal with news. Well, first of all, we don't watch news on TV at all. Um, I uh, tend to check. So initially I was checking the data probably a couple times a day. Now I try to limit it to once a day. So literally, you know, it's, impo it's important to be informed and it's important to be prepared knowing what's happening, of course. But it doesn't need to be the updates um, every five minutes or every hour. They don't contribute to anything. Yeah. They just uh, aggravate the fear, right? 
So, you know, my gift is um, I have been always uh, very strong in creating plans for the worst case scenario. That's what you do in credit business, as you know. But it doesn't mean to suffocate yourself with the fear of catastrophizing. There was this great um, term that I came across a while ago called, you know, we know paranoia is where you worry about something constantly and, you know, sort of drive yourself mad with the worry that something bad's going to happen. So the, the opposite of that is pronoia, where you, you think about a negative scenario and you think, well, what could I do to prepare for that negative scenario? So if it did happen, then, you know, I would be prepared. So for example, you know, I always worry when I'm going on holiday that I'm going to forget to pack something important like my passport or something like that. So the, rather than worry and you know, allow that to happen and then say, oh no, I knew this was gonna happen. You maybe pack your passport in your bag the night before so you yes. don't have that risk. And same with what I was telling you about my webinar recording, I forgot to record it. So rather than now worry that I'm gonna do it again, this time I'm just gonna automatically record it so that I don't have that. And I think certainly we can use that ability to catastrophize as you put it and turn it into a positive say well okay if that does happen how prepared am i to deal with that and i think that way you feel less helpless should that happen so that maybe that's something that we could all learn to do that's true exactly exactly to, to, to look at your habits which uh, would give one more comfort exactly so tell me a little bit more about how you're actually so you you talked about running and you also said you went cycling uh, with your family this morning so yes. so being outdoors is clearly one of the things you're all doing you know what what else are you doing at home to kind of uh, spend the time in a more fruitful way well we now have uh, uh, lunches and dinners together which is uh, which is a very good way and yeah so that's that's probably you know, kind of the biggest the biggest change as well yeah. this time together makes a difference and, and of course cooking together creates a change as well yeah and these are memories that hopefully are going to stay with with your children in particular you know well after all this is gone yes yes powerful. yes and, yeah. and and i think um it's very important for children you know that life is full of uncertainties and um and, and our children are, have been very lucky in being um, raised in quite a protected environment. But in a way, life is uh, much more complex than that. And I think this time makes it very clear. And also, it's, I think a lot of people will develop the techniques of how to deal with uncertainty and how to deal with fear and also how to be more compassionate to others. Yeah. yeah. And, and of course there is, you know, and, 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 and accept that there is a lot of pain, there is a lot of grief. And, 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 and accept that it's important to feel those feelings before moving on. Right. And it's, and, and it's all what I think that's what, um, builds the, the resilience and and the, and then and then even more important it's um, adaptability. So uh, and you know so I I I work I work together with my actually former client in the business called Adapter, and that's like you know adaptability is even more important. Absolutely. You know it, it's a, it's a, it, it's a, it's how do we adjust to deal with new environment and to deal with new circumstances. And you know, you moved from country to country, right? So you know that it actually this, this even changing country, it's, it's increases your adaptability. Dealing with crisis increases your adaptability. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And I think this is, a, this is a great example of seeing that happen across the globe. You know, it's not just isolated to a particular industry and we've seen this happen you know in the previous bear markets where different industries have come under a lot of pressure and they've had to they've been forced to either adapt or die you know we've seen that with the retail sector and the online 
you know, uh, competitors coming and eating their lunch. But this is going to be interesting. So I'm, I'm, I'm interested in whether you have any sort of sense of how, you know, business and the economy is going to evolve post this pandemic. I mean, in your conversations with leaders, you know, what are they saying? How are they, how are they feeling about what's going to happen in the future? Right, right. Uh, you know, it's 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 a very good question, Ro. And um, you know, the, some of the best businesses were created during the times of great uh, depression. You know, as we know, great recessions, right? So, um, and uh, some of the uh, really creative visionary leaders um, whom I have been coaching, it's amazing how they look the situation at look a situation as an opportunity it's almost um what's the goal that was important for you before but you didn't have time might be time to spend on it and as a result it just kind of was there and it's, and, and and it's going to become even more important when this is over and 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 what can you do and dealing with that yeah what opportunities are, are you seeing and also really focusing on what do your clients need right and and that's that can be an opportunity to actually really deepen your relationships with your clients as as a business right understanding yeah. what clients need how you can support clients yeah. And, and, and the team, right? So because if um, the businesses who show compassion to their teams as well, they will come out much stronger with much stronger trust built up among employees, right? True. And, and probably high loyalty. Yes. But of course, you know, there is a lot of pain in the process. So it's not, you know, it's kind of, dealing with a stage of chaos is very important. You know, I was speaking to another leader who said, well, you know, we just need, um, we needed to think obviously furloughing the employees, you know, how to, you know, how to deal, you know, with the reduction of the income, how to deal with the salaries decreases. So there are all those like busy items. And then, and then the next stage, it's like accepting okay, but actually that's going to be here now for a while. And, and then like almost preparing, okay, what, how we're going to create a new environment uh, when we're going to return to work and for the space in the elevators even, you know, it, it's kind of like the, a lot of leaders have to think in a very new way. And, you know, so, so it's like it's talk about paradigm shift, right? And, and shifting paradigm creates new ideas what, what about individuals you know because there must be a lot of people who are really worried that their jobs won't be around when this whole thing you know comes some some people may have already been laid off because the businesses couldn't afford to keep them you know what what do you think people how should people think about their future because i mean i can imagine it's it's really anxious uh, time for them you know if they don't have enough income to support their families. So how, how as individuals, would you um, suggest people look at this whole crisis as an opportunity? Well, I think first of all, it's acknowledging the first situation, you know, because we need to, as, as human, of course, we need to take care of, um, of our basic um, safety needs and financial needs and especially in the, in the first stage um, of chaos it's so important to um, to address uh, these issues of safety on a personal level on the family level so it's, it, it, it is important to think okay how can I reduce my expenses um, what can I do to increase my revenues? And you know, so it's like, who can support me in that? Uh, and then, of course, you know, sometimes what I notice, 
people actually, some people might have not even liked that job. So as a result, um, it almost creates a natural opportunity. But of course, you know, it's, it's to get through this process of pain, right? Yes. I, I like the concept um, of it's happening for me, not to me. Yes. It's, it's accepting that we are all on some type of the journey. Yes. And, and looking also back of, you know, there were, there were different crises. A lot of us have dealt with different types of crises, you know, and we came out of that stronger and, and looking how, how do you, in, how have you individually dealt with the crisis before? What, what have you learned? What supported you? And see, and, and sometimes looking back at how we dealt before, you think, oh, actually, I survived, I became stronger. That's my differentiating factor. That's my gift. Sick. And that's my journey. It's taking ownership, isn't it? It's taking ownership of what's happening to you and, and believing that you can actually find a way around it because you've done it before, perhaps, you know, in a previous crisis. So I, before we end, I would love to sort of revisit that thing we were talking about gratitude and you know something that we talked about and i found it so you know so insightful and you know really fresh thought that nobody had ever mentioned to me, me before so tell me about how you look at gratitude and and how we should maybe be wary of gratitude beca becoming a limitation in itself mm. i uh, i think of course you know and on one hand i told my girls for example when you wash your hands uh, rather than actually singing happy birthday, think of three things you're grateful for. And and what I mean is like grateful, you know, small, it could be small things, you know, I'm grateful I had an orange or I'm grateful I have warm water, you know, so it's, it's kind of like the small things. It's important, it's very important to remember and that generates positive feelings in us, right? On the other hand, I think, when gratitude covers fears, when, when it comes from the place of, you know, oh, I should be really grateful. I have a job. And, and you know, it's kind of noticing within yourself. Is it coming from the place of fear? Or is it coming from the place of genuinely being grateful? Because, do, do, do you know, and, and then, and, and then if it comes from the place of fear, because like thinking of my situation when I was in banking then. So I was grateful for um, having that job. But I definitely, but that was covering this deep fear of losing it. So mm -hmm. I think that's a difference because, you know, saying being grateful for having experienced it is different from fear of losing it. Yes. Yes. I think that that's a really, that's a really helpful way to think about it. It also feels like sometimes gratitude comes as a result of feeling an obligation that you know i should be grateful because so many other people don't have this and i should feel grateful that i have a house to live in but it doesn't stop you from wanting more so we can we can so i, I suppose what i'm taking away from what you're saying is that you can be grateful for the things you have but it doesn't mean that that's all you can have and that you're not allowed to want something different or want more right Yes, and also actually what comes to me right now is also a tiny step of courage yeah. because, um, you know, we look, for example, at firemen, at doctors, nurses, um, even, you know, people who deliver food right now, you know, courageous. And, and I remember thinking being on trading floor, and I hear a lot from clients I coach in the city. They say, well, you know, I'm not saving the world. So they're almost giving themselves an excuse of not, or I'm not in a job where to be, where I need to be courageous, right? But actually, what is a tiny step of courage? 
where you are right now to deal with this fear, like say, you know, noticing this fear and think, okay, but actually I can be courageous in my own way. So you might be speaking up for someone or speaking up for yourself, you know, and, and thinking basically using tiny acts of courage as a concept to help being, you know, stuck. Yes, yes. So it's really kind of comparing yourself to yourself rather than always looking to see, well, you know, someone else is more courageous than me or I have more than someone else I should yeah. be grateful. So it's kind of yes. really becoming yeah. a little bit more, you know, taking ownership of your own journey and, and using yourself as your own benchmark and That's always trying to do better. Right. Well, we could talk about this for ages, couldn't we? Because I love it. <laughs> yes. But uh, listen, thank you so much. I've really enjoyed this conversation. And uh, um, there's lots of really, you know, great nuggets for us to think about. And I think the key, maybe I want to sort of end by asking you to, you know, leave our viewers with sort of one, one key message that you would like them to have from you. Well, I guess my main message right now would be to think what actually you are in control of and what is uh, your business versus business of others versus business of universe. And that's, uh, you know, Byron Katie's concept, but I really like it. It really resonates with me. And just thinking of that, but when we spend time in somebody else's business, we take time away from us. Yes. And once we've taken care of ourselves, then we can give this positive energy to others rather than transforming our fears. So it's basically think, what, what can I do? Uh, you know, that's, that's probably the main thing. Yes, yes. I love that. And that's a great note to end on. Thank you so much, Tatiana. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I wish you and your family the best of lockdown. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank and you, look Ron. forward to meeting thank you in person on the other side of this, whenever that is. Thank you. Thank you, Rob.